focus on the villains range and um uh well we might as well just get to it uh we did a big blind hand Hello. earlier today we will or focus on 17. the villains range and, and uh, so for day 18, let's do a cutoff hand. We haven't really uh, examined too many cutoff playing hands just yet. So uh, let's go here. And uh, once again, it's the villain's range. So we're just going to put in or we're going to input kind of a random hand for ourselves. But then we'll be ranging the villain through the streets right here with the cutoff hand. So if we take a look, um, I called and called twice. So I called a three bet, called and called again, called, re-raise, call, checks all the way, check, bet, raise, bet, call. So I must probably really like my hand right here hopefully i have something good to be playing a uh, be, be playing such a big pot like that um passively well betting and calling i guess so let's go ahead and check out this hand oh of course we have our normal tools flopzilla just one window because we're hand reading the villain only i'm sure you can hear my dog barking in the background and we've got to whip out Split Suits hand reading template, which you can get from splitsuit.com slash templates at a donate your own price. Uh, let's see here. So for this very first hand, hand number 878-79388. I didn't see the date. I'll look up the date. Oh, I got it right here real quick. Date 710, a little bit ago. Notes. Whoa. In the cutoff, and let's see what happens. Oh, well, I guess we have already got... Oh, no, he posted a blind. Okay, so we have an under-the-gun poster right here, um, which oftentimes to me means that uh, he just impatient, doesn't care to wait, and is most likely kind of a weaker player. You can see he's got a 40 big blind stack. Not always is the case. People do this kind of stuff to trick you, make you think they're not any good. Um, but hey, look at that. I limped. Okay. Okay. I limped behind, I guess I should say. Um, uh, yep. And then it got a raise from big the big. And then I ended up making the call. So what parts of my range, and it's going to be a really small range, are, before we look at big the big here, what parts of my range are limping and then calling? Well, if we just think about this, it's probably going to be maybe some suited broadways. Um, not any suited aces. I'd rather raise those. Maybe the weaker suited broadways, but it's going to be a ton of pairs and maybe some weaker suited connectors. So let's give myself a six, seven of spades to start. I don't know what it is. As you can see from this, um, I have my hold cards hidden, which I like to do from now on. It makes everything a big surprise, makes hand reading a little bit more. Mm, it simulates in game uh, a little bit more when you don't know who's going to win. Uh, I guess you always know your own cards, but whatever it simulates in-game actual hand reading so big the big decides to isolate over um a posting and a limp so what is his range here we can see he's a 28 25 he's pretty darn loose aggressive on the button he likes oh, wrong one on the button his race first in on the button is 45 percent of the time so he has a large stealing uh range which this is what it can be considered a steal right here because i've shown some weakness my limp raising range probably or my limp raising stat, if he's paying attention to that, is probably pretty darn low. So if I do end up limping in the raising, he could probably put me on aces or kings and fold. So it's a pretty easy kind of steal right here against a couple of uh, against a bloated pot with a couple limps in already. So let's put him on a nice wide two bedding range. Let's look at the 45 first off. This is roughly what he's raising here as a percentage. Uh, let's look at the actual hands. Let's say he can raise all the kings all the way. All the, maybe not these ones actually, come to think of it, the offsuit ugly kings. But he can raise this stuff, uh, probably raise that right there. Remove those so we get a true count of his pre-flop range. Um, I think this is definitely, I mean, well, I'm not gonna say he's gonna limp with deuces and deuces through fives, the guy likes raising. He's raising with all this stuff he's, if he's coming in at all. He's coming in for a raise just to try to steal or for value if he has the value hand. So we can say this is his range, 618 combos, 47% range. Oh, let's see here. Um, uh, I can, I'm gonna say over limp. It's not really an open limp. Well, I don't know what you'd consider it because the guy put in a quarter posting it. I'm gonna call an over limp, then call versus button raise two way to flop the flop comes turn comes river comes all right and notes right here perfect 
47% range. Nice and wide. That makes sense. The heck? Control C to copy. Maybe I didn't hit copy that prior time. Alrighty, so their preflop range is super wide. Our measly little 6-7 suited, which who knows if that's what we have, but I'm just going to guesstimate here. 6-7 um, suited has 40% equity uh, right now, which isn't bad. We're 40-60, uh, 40, 60, or 40% dog, I mean to say. On the flop, 4-3-10, club, spade, club. 4-3-10... Ten spade. Okay, perfect. So on this flop, you can see we basically just hit a gut shot. Nothing special at all. Nothing to come along if this is our hand right here. Um, but he's got a really wide range that didn't hit this flop so strongly. Only 28% of the time he flopped top pair or better, open-ended better, and these combo draws right here. Let's see... So if I do have, let's say I do have pocket threes or fours for a set. I mean, I'm not going to have pocket tens guaranteed. I'm not even going to live behind with three, four suited. So the only really good hands I can have right now, or maybe five, six for an open ender, um, a couple of club draws, like, I don't know, king nine suited of clubs or something like that, um, as well as sets, threes and fours right here. So if I do have a great hand, I'm probably going to be check raising because this guy showed pre-flop, some pre-flop aggression, and he C bet 70% of the time. So if I hit strong, I'm going to check and let him bet so I can raise him and get more money in the pot. And he checks behind. What a shame. So our, I'm sorry, his checking behind range on this board right here. He is not checking his sets. I mean, the pot's only two bucks. We got 10x behind. He wants to get this money in. Guaranteed he wants to get the money in. So he's not going to wait right now. If he has an, a good over pair, he's going to be betting. So no sets. Two pairs, doesn't have any. Over pairs. Um, those are betting there and not checking. Now, some of these top pair hands, the random tens, uh, I think they're all betting. I really don't think any of those, knowing his C bet is 70%, this guy likes to bet. It's, it's a semi wet board, not super wet, but my limp calling range hits it pretty well. So he might play a little cautiously with some of the weaker top pairs. It's possible. So let's actually think about this here. Let's say he is C betting with the, Top pair, ace kicker, king kicker. Um, let's say all the over ones, he's c-betting here. And the under top pair hands, let's just say he can check behind one street to kind of pot control. But with these better ones, actually, let's go ahead and include jack 10. Queen 10 and better will keep out because he would be, I think he'd be happy betting there and we could call with a 10A to 10-7, uh, 10-9 weaker 10s than his jack or, or, or queen or king kicker. So yep, we're gonna limit him to that right there. So he has some top pair hands. Pocket pair below top pairs, that, you know, I, I kinda don't think those are, not all of these are in his checking range. This is checking, checking, checking. It just seems to me that he would be betting these hands. So let's take them out. I mean, I think he would just see, but he's got position on us. We showed weakness by checking, limp calling pre. Yeah, I would think. So let's limit those pocket pair, below top pair. Middle pairs. Yep, I think he could check behind those. Weak pairs, totally checking behind. Unless he wanted to see bet, but he does mitigate his see betting. He doesn't do it 100% of the time. You could see it 70. So he does pick and choose at least a little bit. Probably not see betting his weakest stuff. Uh, ace highs. I can see those not see betting there, just checking behind. No made hands are checking behind. Flush draws. Ooh, look at these. I think these are betting. Let's take those out of his checking behind range. I think with the equity of a draw, he is betting. Open ender. It's not a scary board. I think open enders would bet. Let's take those out. Gut shots, yes, checking behind. Over cards, checking behind. Two card backdoor flush. I could see those checking behind, just a couple of random spades right there. Some of them are strong, and they might be up here, uh, you know, in his checking behind range. But yeah, I think so. So his checking behind range, we actually just removed the strongest possible hands. Kept a lot of weak stuff in his range, except his best draws. I think he would be firing here. What are some of those weak draws? I think all of them. I really do. Even the 6-5, the 5-7, the 7-6, the 8-6. They have a flush draw, but they also got some kind of backup straight equity there. I think he would be betting. 
So let's let's limit him to this. So 85% of his preflop range. He still has 453 combos, which is quite a bit, quite a bit. So his check behind didn't limit his range that much. If he had made some kind of a C-bet, maybe a bigger size C-bet, two-thirds, three-quarter pot, even full pot, we could put him on a stronger hand. Um, possibly, possibly. Uh, what is his range? Shabang, nice big range, 453 hands in it still. And uh, yeah, I mean, seven, six is definitely in a checking and assessing what happens range. Ooh, a six of spades comes, which we cannot have anymore. So let's move our hand to the seven. Oh, we don't want to give ourselves a flush draw. Oh, we could do that. Let's do that. Let's give ourselves a flush draw. Because the six of spades comes right here. So if this is our hand, we do have a pair now. And he has, that didn't complete. Uh, he didn't have deuce five. He didn't have any. Oh, he does have five, seven. It did complete a couple of his draws, but not much at all. Um, but so let's see what happens on this board. We bet a dollar ten, so we lead out half pot. Now I like this bet, either for value or as a bluff, because he checked behind on the turn. I'm sorry, he checked behind on the flop in a spot where he should have c bet to to try to get us off of our hand or to try to get value with a good hand right there. He chose not to c bet, so I'm putting him in near uh, just weaker hands that just didn't want to bloat the pot. So I might be throwing out a bet here. Could be a value bet as well. And he raises to three x. And then we re-raise. Whoo, this is fun stuff. So we re-raise, and he just calls. Now, that could have easily been a bluff uh, a bluff raise call. That's what he did. He made a bluff raise call right here. Maybe probably like a semi-bluff raise call. So on that six, um, I think he's getting aggressive. I don't think he's making that play with stra straights or sets. We showed aggression by by betting and then three betting. If he had a killer hand, he's trying to get it in here. There's no way he's slow playing those, uh-uh. Um, all these top pair hands, yep, those top pairs are still in his range and I could see them raising and then calling, thinking that we are just full of it. We have two over cards, we picked up a flush draw and we're trying to get aggressive with it. I think those are in his range. Pocket pair below tops. Pocket sevens, they do have a gutter. He could hit another seven for trips i mean he could raise and then call with those right there middle pairs various sixes right hmm i don't see any of those making the raise i see those just calling at this point because it was just a half pot bet and with a six on the turn he now has showdown equity so i don't see why he would raise right here why turn his showdown equity hand into a bluff it's possible but I'm going to take them out of the range. Weak pairs, not raising either. Ace highs, meh. So we'll, we'll get some ace highs with the flush draw stuff. Um, those could be raising the ace highs. No made hand raising, nah, over my donk lead. Flush draws, totally raising. Let's keep those in. Flopped and turned flush draws could be raising. He does have some flop, flop, fly. I'm sorry. He does have some flopped flush draws that could have checked behind the flop just for pot control, uh, for, for pot control reasons. And maybe he didn't want to bet and get checked raise on that baby board on the three four ten board. Um, no flush draw. No, those aren't going to be raising. Open ender. Would an open ender raise? What are those? This is random five hands. Oh, and then the seven eight two for a nine or five like a double gutter, which is considered open ender with eight outs there. Um, it's possible they're raising and then calling. So let's leave those in. Just straight gut shots. No, over cards. No. So we've actually done a pretty good job right here of narrowing him big time from his flop range. 31% of hands came through. And the combos, I forgot the number, 134. All right. So if we look at this, if we do have the 7-6, where we still have a flush draw plus a pair, we actually have... Um, 63% equity, but would I donk lead and then re-raise? You know, I could, especially now that I did pick up some showdown equity. I, because his raise of over my donk bet could have easily just been a bluff. So I'm just re-bluffing him or 
re-semi bluffing him with a hand that has drawing equity i could hit, hit a seven for a nice or for a decent two pair hit a six for trips hit a uh, five for a straight and a club for a flush i have a lot of equity i can see myself betting three betting here just to blow him off the hand just to blow him off his own bluff which could be better than my pair of sixes possibly all right so i like the way this hand is shaping up right now and then the eight comes, which completes a seven, nine, five, seven completes. Oh, five, seven was already complete. It just got a stronger straight. Uh, eight, nine, yeah, okay, great. So on the eight of hearts, if we did have the seven, six, um, basically our equity dropped, what was it? From 63 down to 51%. So 50, 50, we're winning, winning right now, if this is our hand. But let's take a look at his entire range. His range on this card just went from 134 combos, eight of hearts hits. Now he has only 40 combos that are top pair or better type hands on this. Um, and he has a good 128 or four or 88 combos that hit kind of weaker stuff right here. But let's see what the action is. Good, I like the bet and it feels like a value bet. It feels like I want him to call. Did, did I limp with a five seven? No. The flush didn't come in. A weird straight got there with a 5-7, right? So I'm thinking I have trips. I have trip threes or fours. I'm not going to change this, but that's what I have. I am value betting with trip threes or fours because the only thing that scares me here is if he had pocket eights the whole way or if he hit sixes or tens. So a set over set situation isn't scaring me. So I'm definitely betting with my... Uh... And then he shoves on me. Oh, man. So what is shoving over our lead? And then we call, of course. So he's doing it with his straights. He's doing it with sets, which he doesn't have any. We remove those. Two pair hands. 10, eight. Yeah, I guess. He rivered two pair. That's totally possible. He could be shoving here thinking that we just have, I don't know, what is it? Could he be doing that? What am I betting? And then he's shoving with two pair. Like if we just have a random 10, maybe we have like queen 10 and he thinks that he has us beat with two pair. Okay, two pair can raise here. Um, middle pairs now. Those random eights that just hit. Why would those raise? They would just call. He's doing with those top pair hands. Weak pairs, ace high is not gonna raise. Unless he wants to turn something into a bluff. I just highly doubt he's gonna do that. I think he's only raising here for value. I really think so. Okay, yep. So we're going to put him on this very tight range of 40 combos, which is only 31% of his prior streets range. Man. So we've put him just on a value range with the way he's played it. I mean, he called a three bet on the turn, and now he's raising over our um, uh, river donk lead. Great. Yep, So, I'm, so and, and I have threes or fours is my guess right here. See what ends up being... 79 oh man pocket six okay so i turned the sixes and he hit a seven nine which so he turned his gutter and he stayed in oh wow so that's an interesting note to make on this guy let's see if i did make that note in this prior small boy button small i so to nice seven up okay cool Capable of raise, call on turn, whoops, turn gut shot um, after checking behind flop. Mm -hmm. He's capable of that. So I think, see, what I think I did, I don't think I misplayed this hand. I mean, I checked with this, I, whoops, where'd it go? Okay, on the flop. Flop comes, four, three, ten. I have pocket sixes. I'm just checking, probably going to call right here because he C-bets so frequently. He's C-betting all of his overcards. He's C-betting hit, well, overcards, I guess, his flush draws, his backdoor flush draws, I'm thinking. At the time, that's probably what I'm thinking. I'm probably going to check call with the sixes. Then I hit my miracle set, which is great, but look at that board. The board's just quite a bit ugly, very wet. Any five has an open ender. Spades, club flushes, all that jazz. It's not a fun board, but I bet only a dollar ten. I'm... What I'm thinking, I made this bet because I wanted him to raise. It's not like I'm really trying to charge his draws. I want him to raise here because we both showed weakness on the flop. It looks like I'm bluffing on the turn. He raised, and then look what I did. So he raised it $1.90. I made it 
250 more. I think I made it just way too way too tempting for him. Uh, if you think about it, he only has four outs right now, which is only going to hit 8% of the time. He needs 19% equity. So technically, he made a bad call right here. But look at the size of his stack. He's probably happy because he has over a double stack on him. He thinks he's invincible. He might be on winner's tilt. I should have bet more to get more money out of him and to charge more for all the various possible draws that were in his range. So while I did bet and then value bet, which I like that play, I don't like the fact that I value bet so small on this turn. Should have value bet more. And if he decided to come along and catch on the river, you know, so be it. But the fact that he called way, like, right now he's not making a mathematically good call. He ended up catching on the river, but you can't really be results oriented. At the time, on this turn, all he had was a gut shot. And mathematically, he wasn't getting the odds to call. But he took the chance and called. If I would have bet 650 or 750 or even triple that to $9 and he still would have called, technically I'm just booking so much profits right there. If he's able to call 3x that, and so he probably needs like, if he's calling 3x, he probably needs like, I don't know, 35, 40% equity or something like that. And he only has 8% to hit his gut shot. And then so I think I should have bet more just to extract more value out of the guy. The bummer is so. I didn't put him on just some random ugly gut shot that really would have been happy a 5-7 or 7-9. I didn't put him on that right there. And so I bet for value. He shoved, and I probably just bet thinking he has a, a weak 10 and 8. Maybe he's bluffing uh, with a busted flush draw or something. Yeah, it happens right there. But that's a good lesson to learn. Bet bigger. Overcharge those draws, especially when you think they might be willing to call. Um, and with the way he played, it's very likely that he did not have a strong hand. He was on some kind of a draw. So I should have bet more to charge the draws. Alrighty, y'all. Thank you very much for watching. I do appreciate it. This was day 18 of 66 days of hand reading. And, uh, well, I'll catch you tomorrow for day 19.